Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be doing another FAQ video. I know you guys find quite a bit of information from you know, me answering other people's questions. So I hope you guys find this video informative and helps you with your own plants. So just a couple things before we get started. Firstly, I'm gonna show you guys our Drosophyllum seeds that we have outside, the same ones that we planted up yesterday. We're then just gonna go water our collection outside and you guys can have a quick update on them. And there's just one other thing that I wanna talk about. Obviously about two or three days ago, we put up a video talking about the seed giveaway. And I understand that some of you guys don't actually have Instagram. So let me just go over it again. What is up for grabs is Drosrica pensis, the red variety. I have two packs of these and I'll be giving these out obviously to two different winners. The way to enter into this competition is to like this video and be subscribed to the channel. And then when I go get Bear, which I will in a couple minutes now, you take a screenshot of me and him and post this onto your Instagram page using the hashtag TFG seeds and tag me in that post so that I can see all the posts. And obviously for you guys who don't have Instagram, I want this to be fair for everyone. Uh, what I want you to do is obviously like this video and be subscribed to the channel, but then go down in the comments and say there, I don't have Instagram and then tell me your favorite carnivorous plant species. So for example, you'll say, I don't have Instagram, my favorite carnivorous plant species is Helium Fora Newtons. So that is just a way that both the people on Instagram and the people who don't have Instagram can be in this competition together. I don't want people to feel like they can't enter the competition. So yeah, let me go get Bear real quick and be ready to take a screenshot. So here we go guys, just take a screenshot of us and remember to post on Instagram using the hashtag TFG Seeds. And obviously you guys that don't have Instagram, as I said, comment down below, I don't have Instagram. And remember to tell me your favorite plant species. Dad, what is his ear doing? Okay, so let me, let me go put him back. He was sleeping once again. Every time I get him, he's sleeping. So there we go, guys. I hope that everyone who wants to get these seeds can get the seeds. And now you know exactly what is up for grab. Drosser Capensis, the red ones. There's two seed packs going out to two different people. So let's go check up on our collection real quick. So here are our seeds that we have planted up yesterday with you guys and you guys need to really make sure that you are spraying your seeds every single day so i have this tiny bottle i generally don't recommend these small bottles because they don't have a good spray but the spray on this guy is very very fine so obviously if you guys have one that is this fine it's perfectly fine to use so what you just want to do is obviously just spray on top of your seed which we planted right in the middle i can see the seeds you guys probably can't you want to spray them every single day. You really want to keep them nice and wet before they have germinated like this. So the reason why we spray them every single day is simply because these seeds need to know that, hey, there's water around, it's time to grow. And, you know, that's why we have to spray them every single day. You have to keep them actually quite moist, quite wet while they're still seeds. And when, you know, the bigger they get, the... Uh, the drier you can leave them. If you guys are looking for a little spray bottle like this, you guys can find it in the description below. I also have, you know, this really big five, five liter spray bottle with the wand. And you know, there's actually quite a few different things there, TDS meter. So if you guys are ever looking for any type of growing supplies, we will have them in the comments below. You know, obviously supplies that are perfect for carnivorous plants. And yeah, I really hope that these supplies will help you grow you guys' plants really well. So let's go water the rest of the collection.
So here is just an advanced grower's tip. As I say many times, Venus flat traps need less water in winter. They should be kept a little bit drier simply because you don't want the roots to rot when they're not really growing. You guys can see the soil up here is very, very dry. But if I were to dig back a little bit, it would still be, you know, a little bit damp. If you guys have not been growing these Venus flat traps for a long time, do not try this. Just leave them with their water trays. But for some of you guys who, you know, have been growing these flat traps for a long time, you can really like see from how the plants are reacting to different situations. You guys would know that these guys can stay a little bit drier and it is good practice to let them dry out a little bit in winter time and you know get, let them dry out for about a day or two in the summertime as well and this is just a really good way just to prevent these guys from really getting root rot and algae build up and you know stuff like that but right now they're on the drier side and I, this is the best time to water them because you can see the peat here is light in color usually it's dark so a good way to tell is when the peat becomes light colored like this so obviously if you aren't comfortable with their growth just keep it to the basics they will still be happy like that Okay guys, now we're back inside. Now let's actually get to the point of this video, which is answering questions. And if you can hear that, that is the neighbor's bird going absolutely insane. And I have no idea why. If you hear squawking, you know where it's coming from. Anyway, let's look at some of these posts. I, I want today's video to be a little bit less information overloading because it gets very tedious sometimes to try and explain every single thing to you guys and I just really want these FAQs to be you know quite lighthearted and entertaining for you guys so here in our first post we can see that this lady is moving her plants outside she's moving them around and this is obviously a great thing for your plants you know many people don't actually know this but carnivorous plants need a lot of sunlight they need like they need at least eight hours of direct sunlight and by at least I literally mean it they need direct intense sunlight straight from the sun itself hitting the plant's leaves for eight hours not shade not dappled light none of that stuff literally direct sunlight and that's for most of the cannabis plants obviously there are some but if you give them that they will die so yeah obviously make sure you do your research on that like all her plants that are outside there, you can see the Saracenias. There are some others, others, cactuses? Cactuses, is that a word? Yeah, it looks like she has some cactuses. Cac cacti, is that the word? I think it's a different type of cactus. But the, what I wanted to tell you guys about this post is that obviously it's good to keep your plants outside, but secondly, these trays that she obviously has her plants in, these specific trays, they are not UV stabilized. And do you wanna know how I know this? Because I have used these trays before. So what happens is that the sun rays, the UV rays, hits the plastic and it makes it very, very brittle. So they last generally two to three years and then after that they just start disintegrating. And it's like, you know, if you don't touch, if you don't touch the trays, perfectly fine. But the moment you try to pick up the trays and you try and move your plants around, as you pick it up, the handles break off. Or what's even worse, sometimes you pick up the tray and the walls come off but the bottom stays there so you pick it up all the water splashes out and you've just broken this thing like you've broken it properly you're like damn okay so yeah just be careful if you're using these type of trays guys so i remember a couple people have like asked before what is a good price for an apenthes and i told you guys between 10 to 30 dollars is a very good price but obviously here in this post you can see this really really big beautiful nepenthes I think it's an Nepenthes Miranda, but, I, but also my Nepenthes identification skills are not the best anyway, so it, it might just be an upper pitch of an Nepenthes Miranda. But yeah, this is an excellent plant. As you can see, it's very big and $25, so that's a very, very good price. So you can see if a plant gets, especially Nepenthes, the bigger the plant, the more the price will be. And $25 for a plant this big is an excellent, excellent price. Share the rarest Nepenthes in your collection. Okay, let me just go get it for you guys real quick. So here it is guys, this is Nepenthes blue eye. It is uh, actually one of the most rarest Nepenthes that you can actually ever get. 
And the reason for this is because it is obviously blue, which is not very often seen in carnivorous plants, and because it has very hard pitches. You see that, guys. But anyway, I use these Nepenthes. I just take these pitches as they grow out of the plant, and I cut these pitches off, and I use it for water. So this actually cost me about $2,000 for this Nepenthes Bluey Eye. So yeah, just letting you guys know. Biggest discrepancy between plants and flower hearts in my collection. So I really want you guys to see this specific picture because it is super interesting. Obviously this is a Cephalotus, it is native to Australia where obviously I am, but you can see how insanely tall the flowers are. The flowers are about four feet above the actual height of the plant itself. And it's just super, super interesting to see how tall they make their flowers. And the reason for this is simply so that you know, they have the flowers up in the air to attract the pollinators without it being on the ground because what they mainly eat are low-laying walking insects, like for example, ants or, you know, little crickets, whatever the hell walks on the ground and falls inside those traps. So obviously by making a super, super tall flower, they firstly prevent mixing up their, you know, food items and their pollinators because their pollinators are obviously flying insects. That's what's so high up in the air. For the flying insects, they're never on the ground. So they're flying and they see this thing right up and they're like, oh, look at that flower, there's some food. Lands on the flower, pollinates it and flowers off. So by actually having super tall flowers like this, the plant is preventing itself from eating their pollinators and really ensuring maximal, you know, seed dispersion or Maximum seed development by not using their prey as pollinators and they do that by having those tall flowers So this is something very interesting You can often see it with many different carnivorous plants and many different, you know, plants in the world just naturally Oh guys, look at this picture. So this is very interesting. This is Nepenthes with rice inside of it So I know one of our subscribers mentioned earlier that they have seen rice inside of Ampullaria pitches and obviously this is kind of like a meal, like a street meal, I think in, I don't know, Thai, Taiwan, Philippines, I don't, I'm really, I'm really not sure guys. Yeah, this, this is how people, you know, use the plants. Um, you often see monkeys drinking water out of them and obviously humans, we use them to eat. We put food in it and we eat it. So yeah, it's very interesting. That's, that's something that not many people actually know about. Oh, okay guys, this is a very, very good post that this person has actually put up. So as you can see that this person is talking about a game of scam or no scam. So I often see posts on Facebook where people are talking about their seeds that they got and they're like, is this my Venus flower trap? When do the traps get formed? And it's an adult sized basil plant. So yeah, guys, you need to be very, very careful when you are blind when you are buying any type of plant or seed online, especially the seeds, because what these sellers do, they put a post up, they say something like, Venus flytrap 100 pieces, blue enchantress, Venus flytrap rare, super rare, bonsai. And then people go like, oh, $1 for 100 pieces? I'm gonna get this. So obviously they pay the money, the plants arrive, well, the seeds arrive to them, they plant the seeds, and they're not Venus flytrap seeds, they're just random weeds from outside. And then when they try to contact that person, that person has obviously just, you know, switched off their accounts and just changed accounts and is doing the exact same scam on a different account. And all they do is that they scam you, they take your money and they just give you seeds that come from your garden outside. The ways to tell if you are going to get scammed or not, the ways to tell if it's a fake advertisement is that if it includes any one of these words, you know it's a scam. Those words are 100 PCS, pieces, bonsai, blue, enchantress, rare, mystical, cheap, Venus flytrap, rare plant, bonsai, like just if it just doesn't, if it just doesn't have any clarity to it. And if the picture looks super saturated and if the picture is a blue carnivorous plant, it is fake because you don't get any blue carnivorous plants. And if the price is also quite cheap, then you, you should be extra worried. So if it looks anything like that, just know it is a scam. The way to tell that it is not a scam is if it says Venus flytraps, five seeds for $10. And you can go into the actual advert and the person's given you 
light information, watering, soil, and it seems like they're actually giving you some guidance as how to look after the plants that you'll eventually grow. So yeah, guys, just be very, very careful with that because oftentimes people get scammed and the only way to stop the scams is to stop buying it. And this person just randomly said that they have ordered a copy of The Savage Garden. Good for you. I mean, yeah, it's a very good book. It's actually, people oftentimes say it's the Bible of carnivorous plants. And I, I do recommend that you guys get it. It's a really good book. And it covers every single carnivorous plants, the best book really to go to for the care on all of the carnivorous plants. So if you do want that book, I will put it in the link below. So go get that book if you don't have it yet. I really do recommend that book to everyone who likes kind of response and really wants to grow them really well. So there we go guys. This was actually a little bit long of a video. I wasn't expecting it to be so long, especially because I wasn't going into too much detail and too much depth. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. And also if you enjoyed this type of content, remember to subscribe to the channel. And by doing that, you can also enter into our seed giveaway. So do make sure that you take a screenshot of me and Bear, post it on Instagram, use the hashtag TFGCs and tag us so that we can see your posts and you can obviously have a chance of winning one of two packs of Gerocera Capensis, the red variety. And as I've said, if you don't have Instagram, like this video and subscribe to the channel and comment down below saying, I don't have Instagram and tell me your favorite carnivorous plant species and I will write you right down on the list of all the participants so that you also have a fair chance. So there we go guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in tomorrow's video.